Uh, welcome to the CES meeting. It is April 27th, 2022, and our agenda and attendance is light today, but we do have enough people to talk about. Is frozen, making that faster, and maybe um, getting the uh, avoiding the property override hazard in the language. And Matthew has the floor. All right. Um, so, uh, while I, I had an idea, let me uh, actually share my screen. So, I had a potential idea on how um, to allow, so let me, let me first by, start by explaining or recapping what my understanding of the override mistake is. Um, when you do a set, so uh, foo dot to string uh, equals something, um, and something on the prototype chain of uh, the objects um, has that property to string as non writable, um, then you cannot do an assignment with equal, you have to do a uh, defined property. Um, this is very cumbersome. A lot of code uh, out in the in the wild uh, does equal uh, for uh, convenience. Uh, nobody wants to call defined property everywhere, um, and this is a problem for frozen intrinsics because um, or uh, or hardening things because now you prototype chain uh, has those completely frozen and thus non writable. Uh, properties that can no longer be assigned in uh, through equal. Um, did, I, did I capture that right? Uh, anyone, was that clear enough for what the override mistake is? I think that was correct, yeah. Okay, so um, the issue is the issue with addressing the override mistake is that uh, some code actually relies on this behavior. It's been uh, like that for years now. So anything that uh, existing code does uh, shouldn't be able to trigger, sh should keep continu continue triggering this behavior. Um, however, that doesn't prevent us from in introducing a new API um, that would put the object in a certain mode, put the prototype object in a certain mode uh, where uh, now when you do an assignment to an object that has that, uh, pro that, that, has that, uh, that frozen object on the prototype does not trigger the, uh, the, um, the prevention of sets and, can, and ends up doing a, a define on the target itself. Um, the idea that I had was to introduce a sort of uh, a private field on objects to cache the integrity level uh, of the uh, of an object. So the idea is that you would freeze object.prototype, for example, asking for the integrity level to be cached in a, in a private slot on uh, on the object. So um, I, I, in something, for example, like I name it cache integrity. That allows you to do two things. Um, first, that allows you to do that when you do an is frozen check, instead of checking, um, uh, calling is uh, prevent, what is it again? Uh, is extensible and uh, check all that all, all the own keys um, descriptors are all non-configurable. So basically is frozen currently walks the uh, prototype chain and the object verify that nothing is extensible and nothing is... Um, uh, it doesn't walk the prototype chain. It just, it looks at the... Right. It, it, doesn't, it, it walks all the proper properties heard in those. Frozen is frozen checks uh, the object, checks that the prototype, um, check that it's not extensible and checks that all property descriptors are non-configurable and non-writable. Um, so, so, I have a, so I have a question about the proposal already, yeah. um, which is uh, just taking that part of your proposal by itself, 
Uh, isn't that already an optimization that uh, engines can do and probably- For regular objects, yes. I, as I said, like this would actually only be observable for proxy objects. This, I, I, I actually write it here. Um, this is only relevant in the case of exotics like proxies uh, because an implementation can already do this uh, because it would be non-observable for regular objects. The regular objects would not be able to observe this. I see. Um, okay. Um, now the second step is now that we have a flag on the object that is the result of a new path uh, in the execution. Um, we can check that flag, which is the cache integrity level uh, during the ordinary sets with the own descriptor. Uh, and maybe I'll go uh, uh, to, uh, to the spec, but in the own set, Ordinary set with own descriptor, it uh, recurses into the sets of the uh, prototype until it reaches uh, um, the prototype object where that property is defined. At that point, it checks if it's a data uh, property or if it's a setter or getter, and or problem has always been with uh, the data property. Um, so instead of doing this simple check here, is data descriptor and own desk writable false? Um, there would be a preliminary check. Is the cache integrity, um, is there a cache integrity uh, that is uh, uh, not frozen? Then do the writable check. If it's not, uh, if it is set as frozen, we basically fall through and falling through means uh, defining it uh, uh, on, the, on the target objects. Another question? Yep. Um, so, uh, in order for, since this creates two observable differences, uh, the proxy one that I, and, and this one, uh, the uh, implementations that do uh, the optimization for regular objects currently could not use this flag as the state for their optimization. This flag would have to be distinct from any internal optimization they're currently already doing because the current optimization does not have this observability. Um, why can the optimization based on uh, this flag for it is frozen optimization, right? Yeah, the, the, any existing is frozen optimization that implementations are doing that might make use of some hidden state variable. That state, that hidden state variable would have to be distinct from the- Correct. The okay. one plus the other, uh, not, uh, so correct. The, the new, my cache integrity slots would imply uh, caching, but internal caching would not imply uh, cache integrity. Okay. So when you say, so caching is a little bit of a- It's a misnomer, yes. Yeah. Things. Right, because if you just, if the implementation is just, you know, doing a internal caching of the result of an is frozen check, uh, it would not be using this cache. Yes, we, we can bike shed the name. Um, okay, just trying to get clarity. Yeah, we can bike shed the name, but the idea it's like it's cache integrity level plus uh, I opt in uh, for, um, Fixing the uh, the return the property yeah the override mistake <laughs> too many overrides <laughs> yeah so so what is the what is the new the new way you say freeze in the code that triggers all this uh, you say freeze and then you pass a uh, second argument with an options bag which has something to be um, bike shed here I put it cache integrity but we can bike shed okay. exactly what. Okay, so 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 it's okay, and uh, if you do this on an object that is already frozen, it will do the existing uh, is frozen checks and then remember it. Okay, uh, and I mean, I, I actually doesn't do the is frozen check. It goes through the freezing mechanism again because freezing an object again is perfectly fine. 
Uh, uh, that's a good point. Um, and and would be observable by a proxy. <laughs> okay. And right, right. And so the thing is now that once you've done that, uh, the proxy will not be able to observe it being frozen again or checked for freezing. Okay. So, uh, so two two further questions. One is, do you imagine that Harden would be doing this? You know, the Harden is a deep application of this variety of freeze. Correct. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that it's introducing new observable mutable state on objects that in the current version of the spec would have been considered to not be mutable. So, um, so given that Harden is, is, is doing this variety recursively, anything that's freezing by hardening would actually remain safe. Um, it's, but anything, not anything really it's, it's, it's not really observable. It's not really observable because a proxy wouldn't, so the only case where it matters is a proxy and the proxy traps wouldn't trigger anymore. Um, so, so you the, already so need a side channel for communicating that the proxy traps were triggered to verify that the proxy traps were triggered. No, that's not the one I'm concerned about because that's one on the implementation of the object rather than clients of the object communicating with each other. Um, uh, it's the change in override behavior. If um, the one, you know, Alice and Bob both share a, I see. Yeah. Um, a frozen data object that, that in today's spec is immutable and therefore does not enable them to communicate. Yes, um, they can flip one bit uh, once and, uh, and communicate through that. You're right. Okay. Um, well, we, hmm. I'm not saying this is a fatal problem, but it's definitely a problem. I see. Um, I did not see that. <laughs> um, right. There is, you can pass an object uh, and you can test it uh, for whether it triggers the override mistake and then you can uh, see when that changes. Huh. Interesting. I, I mean, I'd, I'd be willing to see this go ahead despite that because the all the code that we're aware of that counts on frozen frozen plane objects being pure are using harden to do that yeah um, yeah and we could uh we could tame object.freeze to always include uh this flag Oh, I see. The 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 hardened JavaScript object that freeze. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, that's really nice. So, so, so I'm still behind on this conversation. So then is the goal to provide developers a way to freeze certain objects that will short circuit the in general, of determine where to do a set, it will not short circuit it. It will it will um, it will prevent this flag in case that object has been frozen uh, that certain way. So instead of just checking, is that description I found uh, writable uh, and just abort right away? Uh, it will um, it will only consider that if that object has been frozen, if that prototype object has been frozen in that way. Oh, is there any reflective query behavior, right? I mean, is extensible uh, is a reflective operation for querying whether the object is extensible. Um, right, it would simply return the cached uh, value. But uh, what would return the cached value? Reflect is extensible. I said the, the reflect is sensible just triggers the is extensible 
uh, so sorry. Yes, it would. The um, the ch is extensible check would be uh, test integrity level. So this is the one that would be uh, changed. Um, test integrity level is the one that is triggered. So um, is that a would, user level operation? The what? Is that it's test integrity level? I'm assuming is an internal procedure. Yeah, test integrity revision. It's an abstract operation that is uh, used by uh, is frozen, is sealed, and um, I am somewhat surprised that it is not used by reflect. Dot is uh, is extensible. Interesting. Yeah, that one might need to be. Um, but but in terms of what's exposed in the in, in, as a reflective operation, the API, would you have a reflect dot test integrity level? Would you have a reflect dot? Um, uh, no, I, I don't think it, I don't think this should be testable. Uh, huh. How do you maintain transparencies through proxies? You. If you inherit from oh. a, a proxy emulating a normally frozen object, you don't. When you when you freeze, when you freeze your proxy, that slot gets added to the proxy, and the proxy will not never get probed anymore. No, no. If you um, if the target of the proxy is frozen versus specially frozen. Right, if the, the proxy is trying to emulate a target. Okay, um, so you're concerned that a uh, target has been already frozen in, the, in that mode. Um, and we're creating a proxy for that object. Uh, and you're saying that the, uh, the proxy should behave the same way instead. We have a question from Alex. Yes, um, Matthew. I'm thinking of this as a um, counting problem in a sense, or a counting problem. Um, I'm thinking about it in the case where somebody uh, basically does um, object dot set property descriptor. I'm sorry, reflect that de define property. And they set is configurable to false and is writable to false. And they do that repeatedly. And then they implement the other steps that freeze does, but they don't directly call freeze. Um, I'm thinking that every time that a property is set to not configurable and not writable, you might have basically a counter that decrements one to say, hey, we have this many properties that are available. Um, I'm sorry, that are configurable slash writable. And include in that count um, whether the object is extensible and whether the object has uh, the ability to have the prototype set. Um, and, and once the counter reaches zero, you're frozen. So I'm wondering if uh, cached integrity might be a simple counter structure of some kind. Um, the problem is to make sure we set that flag on the objects through only a new mean, uh, a new API or an existing API's extension. If you go in and um, uh, prevent it extensions on the object and, and go and manually freeze, manually sets all the properties as non-writable, non-configurable, uh, this shouldn't trigger uh, this new behavior. <sighs> the, it, it has to be an explicit action that existing code cannot uh, ever undertake. Hmm. I guess the case I'm thinking about is sort of a really oddball case. I mean, it, it's definitely anti-optimization, what I'm thinking of. So maybe it doesn't even count. Never mind. I'm still having a very hard time understanding this. The motivation 
was for me to find a way to set a flag on the object saying it is okay uh, when you if you encounter a property on uh, on, on on an object that that has this flag uh, do not trigger the uh, override mistake um, and this has to come from a new API surface because the existing code cannot uh, cannot trigger it. Well, I, I, I get I get the mechanics of it. I, I still don't get it. where are we going to use this? Like, sure, there is a override mistake, but the the main the main place that I know I'm going to use it is to simply have harden be the recursive application of this operation so that all objects frozen by Harden are not triggering of the override mistake. And in particular, that lockdown in hardening all the primordials hardens the primordials in such a way that uh, it does not trigger the override mistake. Right. And no frozen intrinsics, for example, would be able to use this mechanism as well. Uh, right. Um, so I take note of the misnaming. Um, I also, I'd like to go back for a second to Mark's point about um, what to do about a proxy which has such a frozen object as targets. Um, yeah. I think I have to think about this one a little bit. Um, yeah, I am, I am a... tempted to say that it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't automatically be uh, transparent. Um, that basically you would have to you would have to freeze the proxy object explicitly uh, that way for for it to for the proxy object to behave that way. Yeah, but you but but in order for you to do that, you need to understand that the target that you are creating a proxy for has that that flag on it. No, you right. you don't. No, the thing is, let's say you've got a yellow proxy for a a blue object that's normally frozen, right? And then you have a uh, let's say the, the so the blue object is um, uh, blue Alice, uh, the yellow proxy is Alice Prime, uh, and then you have a yellow Bob, which is a normal object that inherits from yellow from yellow Alice Prime, and um, and then somebody tries to assign to the property foo on yellow Bob. Uh, so that's going to go go up to the. Um, so I, I track that, and it will it will trip the set trap of uh, the proxy object. Um, so if you uh, look in the recursion here, um, if it's uh, if their own description is undefined, uh, then you go get the prototype of your uh, you get your parents. Uh, okay. If the parent is not null, you trigger the set trap. So you will end up triggering the set trap of your proxy object. Uh, now you will. Uh, the, the set trap, that, that, there's something I'm confused about. It can't. You trigger this. Okay, I'm very confused. The set, you're not setting. Except in the accessor case, you're not setting. A, I thought that there was a can set trap or something. I mean, or a can set operation. I don't understand how this works. In the, just in the normal case, so mm -hmm. you set the you do the the set trap on the parent, and if the parent has a writable property of that name, you're not going to set that property on the parent. Um. So it starts at uh, what was the abstract operation name uh, where it starts? I think it's define or oh oh it's because of the receiver argument. Yeah. 
Um, but but so what what Mark is saying is this is is a is, is the set what triggers setting something onto Bob, which is yellow. So it is start there. You're trying to set full into Bob, which is yellow, and then you go from there. Mm -hmm. And you walk us through that process. Yeah. So the set trap is is so the, the set the, the set trap on the parent would be invoked with yellow bob as the receiver. Um, does anybody remember where uh, the so something equals triggers sets? Correct. Yes. Yes. Um, the one that we're talking about, yes. So it goes, it would go straight in here because that your prox, your object is actually a. Uh, it's not a proxy. It's not a proxy. Right. Bob. Bob is not a proxy. Bob inherits from a proxy. Okay. Bob is not a proxy. Then it would go into the ordinary uh, sets. Okay. Well, good. Let's look at that. Ordinary sets um, gets the own description. Doesn't okay. have any. Yeah. Right. Um, so ordinary set within descriptor will be called with uh, Bob. Um, the property name, the value that we want to set, the receiver, which is which will also be Bob. Both an O and receiver will be that, and own desk will be no. Right. So own desk is undefined. Um, so we go into the parents. We okay. get the prototype. Okay. We get the prototype. Um, there is a parent. The parent yep. is uh, the proxy object, correct? Correct. So we call parent sets um, okay. the uh, property, uh, so foo, value, whatever, and the receiver is still uh, Bob. Right. Proxy sets is called. Um, and uh, we assume there's a trap or there's no trap, what, uh, what is the... Uh, let's assume that there is a trap. So we call, for, we call for, it... For, for exam, what's examined in the, in, the, in the full membrane case where yellow Alice Prime is trying to emulate Alice, blue yeah. Alice, okay? So um, the... So we're saying the target here has been uh, not the shadow target. There's there's the sh there's a shadow target, right. which is up to the handler to maintain, and then the real target is Alice, that is the blue Alice that at this stage yeah. is normally is normally frozen. Right. So the real targets. Um, um, Okay, so we call the trap. Uh, we we see that the target would be uh, we get the own description of the real target. It is uh, actually the shadow target. I'm gonna you're, you're getting I'll, six eight. You're getting into six eight. You're gonna get 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 to call the set with I, a. I, I understand. I'm 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 trying to uh, figure out what the states of the uh, things are. The real target, real Alice in uh, in in the target realm, uh, is fully frozen. Right. Uh, and it, it's in that at state. That stage, right? it's 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 fully frozen, but it's normally frozen. Normal frozen. Normal. Normal. Oh, I thought, no. I thought you wanted to. Uh, oh, well, first one, one thing at a time. For, for normal first, and then the, the other thing. Right. Yeah, so it's exactly. normal frozen. I do the uh, normal frozen case first mm -hmm. to see so that when 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 we once we've walked through the normal frozen case, then uh, then the next time so with the setting of foo at the point that that we did bob dot foo equals eight, Al blue Alice was normally frozen. Yeah. So, once we've done that and returned, then we're going to set bob dot bar equals nine. But, be but before we did that, somebody in the blue world um, uh, put blue okay. Alice into this new integrity level. Okay, so um, blue Alice is uh, frozen. So uh, we will call um, the trap. The trap will, I assume, will try to do something like reflect 
dot sets. Yes. Um, all right. Where is reflect dot sets? Okay. It triggers uh, the regular sets on the target. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so triggering the regular sets on the target itself uh, with the receiver. Um, okay. So the, so now we now we need to be careful because the um, the receiver would have been um, what would the, be the receiver in this case? The receiver in this case. Would be blue, would be blue Bob Prime, would be a blue proxy for yellow Bob. A blue proxy for yellow Bob, yes. Okay. Um, so now we end up back where we started. Uh, well, we, we can go back to uh, sets, ordinary sets, ordinary sets with own descriptor. There is a known descriptor this time. Uh, the receiver, as we said, is the uh, blue proxy for yellow Bob. And oh, uh, here is uh, blue Alice. Correct. OK. Uh, there is an own descriptor. It's a data descriptor. Um, the own desk writable is false. Yep. I believe there's a bug in, this, in the bug in the spec here. It should only return false if um, the value is different. It shouldn't. It shouldn't cause an error if uh, if it's the same uh, uh, value that we're trying to write. I actually don't know. Can somebody test that? I believe it doesn't it doesn't throw. Yeah, I believe the spec doesn't represent represent reality. I actually noted that. Um, but okay. Let's assume <laughs> the actual behavior here. Um, I yeah, but that that is if there is a descriptor. If there is no descriptor, then it will be set onto the task one C. It, uh, it is it is already frozen. Yeah, we're only we only care about the case where Blue Alice has a a a okay. not, not writable foo 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 property. Right. Um, so nothing uh, here. It should uh, it should see that the description uh, matches if the spec was correct, um, and just return true. Correct. Okay. So so let's in order to in order to avoid this question, let's just assume that the value being set is different than the existing value. Okay. The value being set is different. So um, well, it will throw. What will throw? It will return false. It will return false. It will return false. Yeah. But it will. It's returning false in the middle of the algorithm. So there's no throw yet. Yes, correct. It's it will return false. Um, so reflect will return false. And that'll go back, and that whole the logic goes back out through the membrane, mm -hmm. and then it's the yellow set that ends up returning. That it's the yellow set, or ordinary set on Bob that ends up throwing. Correct. Um, which uh, I that, actually don't know where that happens. Uh, yeah, it would be good to find out. It's on the on the on the ordinary set. Yeah. Uh, it's not actually a set, it's whoever calls a set. Um, uh, 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 and, and that's a place where we actually should have started at. Uh, that, that's uh, the, the assignment. The assignment um, that's on, uh, on the grammar side. Yeah, Yeah, it's on the grammar side, and I don't know how to grab the, yeah. the grammar side. So. Yeah, so we, I think we can just assume it, but you're yep. correct. That does not throw, set returns false. Yep. Uh, and the reason we did that, by the way, I can, I can give you the historical perspective on that. The reason we did that is a sloppy assignment does not throw, but the set trap should not be able to sense whether the assignment was sloppy or strict. Can you say that again? The, a sloppy assignment that fails does not throw, but the handler trap should not be able to sense whether the assignment was sloppy or strict. 
I see. And therefore, the trap always just indicates failure by returning false. And it's up to the syntactic construct whether or not to turn that into a throw, depending on whether the, it's strict syntax or sloppy syntax. I see. Very well. Right. That was another place where we had to refactor the spec to avoid dynamic scoping. So let's get back. Uh, and I think this will work from what I already ran into my head. Um, so now, or uh, blue LS is frozen into that state. Uh, that happened somewhere on the uh, blue side. So yeah, proxy is not aware of this. Correct. Um, we get through the steps. Uh, we still don't have a known description for um, for Bob. Um, okay. So we get the prototype, which uh, is going to be the proxy for Alice. Okay. Um, we call uh, sets, which is going to be the proxy's set trap. Mm -hmm. Again, as before, the proxy set trap will call reflect.set on blue Alice. Mm -hmm. um, reflect.set on blue Alice will end up calling ordinary sets with own descriptor with O being blue Alice, yeah. P bar, value whatever, receiver blue proxy for yellow Bob. Correct. And an own description. Yes. When we get to the is data descriptor, we will get into the new check. The new check Alice um, is um, uh, has this flag set on the uh, blue Alice, so it will trigger a. Um, it will fall through and do a. Uh, the steps here, which are um, to define own property on the receiver. OK. So now we're going to try to do define property on the blue proxy uh, for yellow Bob. OK. So the proxy will be able to observe this, but should behave normally. Yes. OK, that's very good. So there's only one remaining problem that I can see in this scenario, but I'm, I'm very pleased at where we are. Uh, the remaining problem is that uh, you want to, I, I presume that you would like to add to the object invariance that once a, no, I suppose you don't need to. No, you don't. It's not a, it's not a stability commitment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a behavior which means that the proxy could act like it's specially frozen at one point and then go back to acting like it's normally frozen. That's weird. Well, no, then, then you've got a communications channel. That's not good. Um, no, I think, I, think, I think you need to, I think there needs to be a stability commitment here because so otherwise, Otherwise, can, can, can you elaborate more, Mark? I, I do have some other comments different, but can you elaborate more on these? Yeah, so, so right now we're doing all the bookkeeping um, uh, to enforce that the handler cannot violate the stability commitments by saying that, the, that in order to act in such a way as to be consistent with the stability commitment, uh, you have to make the shadow target stable in that way. Um, uh, and, but if, if this is not a stability commitment, if it's just a handler behavior. That's the thing, the shadow, the shadow target. The, so does the, does, would the proxy ever have enough information to, to say that the shadow target must be specially frozen. So the shadow target has never been specially frozen at this point. That's correct. And, so the, if, and if we trigger freeze on, um, if we trigger freeze uh, special on the proxy object itself, 
we flag the proxy object itself, and then this the proxy will yeah. not be able to uh, will not go through this mechanism anymore. So that, that's not the case I'm concerned about. The case I'm concerned about is um, if Alice is now specially frozen. Mm -hmm. um, the prox and but there's a shadow target Alice, um, which is uh, the shadow targets are yellow. Uh, you know, the shadow target for blue object is itself yellow. So there's a, a shadow target, yellow Alice, Alice double prime or Alice shadow target. Let's well, just say Alice shadow, uh, shadow yeah. Alice. Uh, so shadow Alice is um, not specially frozen. Uh, in order to represent, you know, the proxy did know enough that when it saw that, that real Alice was frozen, um, that the proxy would normally freeze shadow Alice, but when the real Alice is specially frozen, the proxy never knows enough to specially freeze shadow Alice, and maybe that doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. We, I guess we could imagine passing the special freeze request in uh, the prevent extensions trap. Um, so I don't remember uh, what the, like, well, it's not just, I, I don't think that's necessary, but. So it's the prevent extensions isn't the interesting point here. The, the interesting point here is the, is extensible. The right now, the proxy, um, the proxy is able to find out what the stability properties are of the real Alice, not by causing the real Alice to be stable, but, but just asking how is real Alice stable and then making shadow Alice stable in the same way that real Alice is stable. Mm -hmm. But when real Alice is specially frozen, that's an additional degree of stability that mm -hmm. Uh, the proxy cannot ask about. Mm -hmm. And because the proxy cannot ask about it, it never knows that it should make shadow Alice specially frozen. And like, a, like and, and, you know, and, and it sounds like maybe that's okay because we're not making this additional level of stability into an object invariant that right. needs to be enforced. And therefore the proxy, we're allowing it to act at one moment in time like an object that's specially frozen and then act at a later moment in time like an object that's not specially frozen. And it always could. It always could decide to do whatever it wanted on, uh, on, on the sets. Um, like the only requirement that was on existing on the sets uh, was that if the set would fail, it has to fail. It doesn't say that if the set was to succeed, it has to succeed. Yeah, so let's just make sure of this. The, um, in the part of the spec where the proxy checks the handler response against the shadow target to enforce invariance, mm -hmm. if the set trap returns false, I presume that there's no double checking of that, that the, that the set trap is just always allowed to return false and there's no, there's no yes. consistency check against the target in that case, um, against the shadow target. Correct. I believe there is no invariance there. Okay, in that case, I'm satisfied. There's, we're not introducing a problem here. Um, where are they? Invariance. It's the uh, the trap the the the, pro, the the proxy set trap behavior invokes the handler and then does some right. host checking. That's property invariance. The result of set is a boolean value. Cannot change the value of property to be different from the value of the corresponding target object property. If the corresponding target uh, is non writable Okay, so basically, can't uh, 
we can't okay. succeed if uh, if we would have failed. So, yeah, so it's always allowed to return false. So in other words, the it's, it is the case even today that a proxy for a frozen object, the proxy could emulate. The proxy can emulate this behavior already, yes. So, so a couple of notes on this. So this will break us. The reason why we break us is just because it's a new feature. Um, we we do not, in some scenarios, we do not call the set across the membrane to complete the operation on the other side, which in this case was from, from the, when, when you walk from Bob to his prototype and then you do a set on that prototype, a reflect our set, we don't do that. We actually emulate the algo that you were showing, the, the algo to set the ordinary, um, the, I don't remember the name of it, but we emulate that algo because we, we have certain restrictions in terms of what can be observed by the other side specifically what we call the, 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 the prevent mutations on the other side. So basically saying Bob has no ability to ever change anything on, on the blue side. Um, he can only change its reflection of what the blue side looks like. And, uh, and because we wanted to make sure that the operation happens on on the yellow side in this case, because that's what triggers the set, uh, never seen by the blue side, we we emulate this algo. So, so, so Kariti, that's that's a non-transparency, right? You've introduced a distortion? Right, right. So the distortion plays a role there, but uh, I think even if you don't have distortions, you're just saying whatever, uh, Bob is trying to do only Bob can see it, and it never gets reflect to Alice. So Alice will never see what Bob is trying to do. Um, but that's Bob, not, that, that's definitely not a trend. That's definitely a distortion that, that breaks. Yeah, it's a, it's a distortion mechanism to avoid uh, Bob to, to be able to do any kind of poisoning or any kind of mutation that can affect Alice's integrity. But um, regardless of that. Uh, the this protection mechanism that we use in some scenarios, and we don't use it in all the scenarios, we use it in some scenarios, um, has this um, algo being implemented manually by our membrane. So it basically goes all the way up to the proto chain and uh, finding if there is a descriptor or not, and then determine what, where to what to do with the operation that you're trying to do and so on on the yellow side, never cross into the blue side, only to check for things on the blue side. So that would be a problem for us. Um, so I have to think more about it, what, what the implications of that will be. But um, I think in your case, if someone calls, the problem is really if someone calls a uh, freeze uh, on that prototype object uh, with this special mode. And in well, that- not, Well, not even that. I mean, assuming that no one uses this new feature, um, but then Alice, let me see. If, if the real Alice has been frozen in that mode, it, it wouldn't matter in the first place because you wouldn't be trying to touch Alice, you would only be modifying uh, your version in the yellow realm. Well, the, the yellow realm does preserve the uh, Alice uh, or, or reflects Alice, Alice's uh, behavior. So if Alice has anything that is frozen, whether that's a regular frozen or the new one, um, it needs to reflect it. I guess my question is today with your um, distortion, what 
happens um I'm, I assume you're checking if Alice is frozen or if, if that property is uh, writable or not. I think it's, it's just a matter of trying to understand if you add that new step into 2A, which mm -hmm. I think that's what you're proposing. Yes. If you add a new one to 2A, um, what will be the implications of running code that does not have that check? Um, it will be like today, it will trigger uh, the override mistake and return false ultimately and throw. Right, but if, if someone used the intrinsic operation, and the, the, new, the, new, the new operation, uh -huh on an object, whether that's a blue or a yellow object. And then we hit that algo again, what happened? That's where I'm not sure. Well, that's the thing. If your blue object is a is an ordinary object, um, so it, that doesn't matter. The case really matters if your blue object is a proxy. Um, in which case these steps are not triggered, they it would be your custom implementation that would be triggered. And your custom implementation would be unaware uh, of this flag. Is that right? I have to think more about that. What, what yeah. Mean? Um, and then the reason, by the way, the reason why we do that is like uh, when we have code running in yellow that is attempting to modify anything in the object graph of blue, whether that's uh, modifying a proto, um, a prototype of an object or modifying a, a anything on that object graph that that only that that operation will succeed but it will never modify blue it will yeah. only modify yellow so it's all the prototypes that are shared whether that's DOM APIs or language APIs or whatever it doesn't matter you will not be able to affect the blue side by by any means Right, so so really, in this case, you would end up with a something previously that froze. Sorry, Mark, you were saying? No, no, it was just um, uh, I was unmuted while there was other oh. sound here. Sorry. Okay. Well. I guess anyway, we're out of time. I, I, I guess we need to uh, just think about uh, what it would mean in the case of distortions uh, um, like this. All right. Yeah, that's a meeting. Thank you very much for this conversation, Matthew. Um, and, uh, and see some of you at the end of the meeting. Have a good day.